Vegas Vicky, glittering, high kicking cowgirl with a short skirt and long legs and gray boots and cowboy hat on. She was the only big girl. The only gigantic in there with those three guys. And she fell into disrepair and was rescued by the casino that's on Fremont Street that didn't just have her refurbished, rebuilt, but brought her inside, which protected her from vandalism and the weather. And does, she's still there. Her own bar is named after her and she is a selfie magnet. Everybody that goes into that casino wants to have their picture taken with oh. Vicky. And the guy, the owner, actually said that sometimes when he first puts her on, people cry. What's left, what's gone, I can't forget But love these days is so hard to get From the top to the bottom, I don't understand These sons and daughters win at their hands And down that river waits all my dreams I'm stranded in this desert, I could only scream Gonna miss you. Driving around in the night and going and, and saying, hey, look, I see something up there. We see a sign and we go there and we have no idea really what we're going to find. As you come closer, you know, there are long stretches of lonely highways in Nevada and suddenly you see a, a light in the distance and you know that that light is uh, neon and it will say something to you. For decades, for whatever reason, we've been lured to the deserts of Nevada, capturing the illumination that comes from the unique neon that announces destinations that are unique to Nevada. My name is Sheila Swan. I'm the co-author and co-photographer of the book, Neon Nevada. And I'm Peter Laufer, also the co-author and co-photographer of the book. In the past, it was a method of communicating commercial interests. And there undoubtedly were people who enjoyed the pictures. Neon signs in Nevada illustrate a period of time when activities that were legal in Nevada were illegal elsewhere in this country. And so pictorials of slot machines, signs for motels that were inexpensive for the quickie divorces, and the signs that draw attention to houses of prostitution are indicators of a part of history in Nevada that didn't exist elsewhere legally. Now there is an understanding that neon attracts the eye in a way that's different than the plastic signage that's backlit. There's the movement, the vibrancy of the colors that draws the eye and it creates an emotional response that can be beneficial for the advertiser or just satisfying as it is for the two of us to enjoy as art. It's a discovery. You don't know what you're going to find. So it's like an exploration of light. And that's one of the values of the book. It is this historical sweep from the time of neon being a dominant medium for advertising and promotion in Nevada to it dying out almost and then this resurgence of interest which has resulted in new neon and in historical neon being refurbished, rebuilt, and relit. And that's why we decided to do a third book. <laughs> Thank you.